What is up amigos? Today we're talking about a very important topic which isn't talked about very much, and it should be, and that is the effective angle of attack of an object. This isn't just for airfoils, but for really anything that is exposed to a flow. And we're just gonna be using an airfoil here to begin with, and we'll extend it then later to other items and show you how the effective angle of attack does affect their performance. So to begin with, let's say we have an airfoil here, and this can be on anything, whether that's an airplane or a car or whatever, and we have the free stream flow coming in at your infinity. Now, to begin with, we can all tell that the angle attack of this airfoil, if we draw a line from through the cord, so the, um, through the leading edge and the trailing edge points, and the angle attack between the free stream flow, and this is alpha. And we'll generally quote that whenever we're talking about the lift coefficient of this object. So if we were to draw the graph of the lift coefficient with angle attack, a familiar thing here, and we have the lift coefficient plot here, we'll then see that when we want to figure out what the lift coefficient is, we just go, okay, the angle attack is three degrees or whatever it is. So that's here. And then that's going to correlate to a lift coefficient of 0 0.3 or whatever it is. But that's not strictly true. In fact, in reality, the effective angle attack is far more important in determining the performance of the airfoil than the actual geometric angle attack. So the difference is between the geometric angle attack is the geometric angle attack is the angle that would associate here where we have the free stream flow coming in and the angle between the chord line and this free stream flow. So that's actually alpha geometric. The effective angle attack is the angle attack between the chord of this airfoil and the flow that the airfoil sees. In this particular case, they are the same, but let's talk about when they're not. So let's say we have another airfoil and we have the flow coming in, in infinity, but now for some reason ahead of it, we have some kind of other object. Let's say they're turning veins. So now the flow comes in and even though it was straight to begin with, now it's being turned around a little bit and it's curved. So the flow now coming in is more at that angle. So if we were to figure out what the angle attack is that the airfoil is seeing, so the flow that's impacting the airfoil, it's actually now the angle between this chord line again, but now of this localized flow, so that angle there. And you can see that's now alpha effective, but the angle difference between alpha effective and alpha geometric is quite large. So that's alpha geometric, and that might be, let's say 10 degrees or whatever, alpha effective is only like two degrees. So you can see there's a massive difference there. So in terms of the airfoil performance, what would happen? If we were to look at the alpha geo, so let's say it's 10 degrees, that might be here, and that would correspond to the cushion of, let's say about 1.0, whatever it is. Well, in fact, this airfoil won't be producing a lift cushion of 1.0 because it's not actually seeing flow at 10 degrees, it's actually seeing flow at two degrees. And that's more about here, which would then correlate to about 0 0.2 perhaps, two degrees there. So in reality, the Air Force performance is actually a lot lower or just different in general to what we're expecting. Why is this important? Well, when we want to look at more complicated objects, not just a simple airfoil in isolation, what's happening around that object that then hits the airfoil is very important. Let's take, for example, a car. So let's say we have a, a simple, simplified car here, it's just a block, and we have a rear wing. So that's an airfoil at the back or however you want to place it. And we have the flow coming in and we have U infinity here. Now, if you were to look at the free stream flow and look at how, what angle it's making with this airfoil, you might come up with an angle attack of 20 degrees or whatever. But in reality, the flow is coming around this car and it might be going in different directions. And by the time it hits the rear wing, it might be going down more or up more or whatever. That's changing the angle attack that the airfoil is seeing, so the effective angle attack of this airfoil, which means that this rear wing is going to be producing different amounts of downforce to what you might be calculating it to if you were to just use the free stream flow. What's more, if you had another object in front of it, so you had a, another car or whatever, you now have another weight to contend with. And that means that not only is this rear wing now going to see a different flow again, different angle of attack, but this entire car is going to see a different angle of attack now. It might be coming at different directions. And if you have different components around the car, for example, canards here, or you might have a splitter plate or diffuser or whatever, all these different components now are seeing a different angle of attack, geometric, uh, effective angle of attack, compared to the geometric angle of attack that you would calculate with the free stream flow. And it goes even further than that. So for example, on an airplane, let's say we have, we're looking down from top, and it's a very simple airplane. So we have a airfoil 
platform here, the wing platform, and we have the fuselage coming in the middle here, let's say. Now, if you were to pitch this air, this wing and the plane in total to, let's say, a geometric angle attack of two or three degrees, let's say, three degrees, it's, it's cruising. Well, that doesn't actually mean that the entire wing is now at three degrees either. Let's say it's installed at two degree angle attack, so the fuselage and the wing tilt at the same to the same angle all the time, the geometric angle. But if we look at the wingtips here, we actually get wingtip vortices forming. They're important. So looking from the side, so let's say we have the airfoil here, and we have the vortex coming along on top like that, you can now see it's actually pushing flow down on top in this region. That means it's juice inducing flow, pushing it down. So the flow that the airfoil is seeing now is no longer the free stream flow, but it's now being changed to be at an angle now. So you have that component coming down here. So the angle is a little bit different. And you can see now it's more in line with the quad of this airfoil in this region, which means that this region is actually seeing a lower effective angle attack than geometric angle attack, which means it's producing less lift here. Contrasting that to further inboard, the effective angle attack here is higher because we don't have this wingtip vortex pushing the flow down around this region as much, which means that this inboard region is, is producing more lift because we're higher in this angle attack range, which means we're producing more lift. And then when you get to the fuselage and there's some sort of interaction there, which then drops the lift, but that's another story. So that is the importance of the effective angle attack. And when you see a wing or anything really installed on a car or airplane or whatever, that's not really the angle of attack that the object is seeing. It's not really the be all and end all. You need to look at what is happening upstream and then how that flow is then impacting this downstream object. That will greatly determine how this downstream object will be performing. So that's the end of this video. If you'd like to make sure to click the like and subscribe button. And see you soon. Peace, amigos.